hope you're doing well. In this video, I wanted to talk about why it's the case we say that MR is less than P for firms with market power. So just to be clear, when I say MR, I'm talking about the marginal revenue for a firm. That's the additional revenue that a firm gets if they increase their production by one. When I say P, I mean the price that each unit of the good that we're producing is being sold at. And when I talk about market power, what I'm thinking about is the sort of firms that have a control about their price. So they're price makers rather than price takers. The most obvious and most talked about instance of firms with market power comes with uh, monopolists. Monopolists have a lot of market power. Okay, good. So in order to discuss the reasons why we say MR is less than P for firms with market power, what I'm going to do is just offer a very simple example, a discrete example, I won't use functions, but a very simple example. So in my example, let's just pretend I'm a producer and I'm going to be selling boxes, blue boxes, because they're easy to draw basically on the screen. And let's say initially I am producing five blue boxes at a price of $30 each. Now let's think about the total revenue for my firm. The total revenue is just all of the money that I'm going to get because I'm trading in this market. Well, that's going to be equal to price times quantity. So the number of, of boxes that I'm making multiplied by the price in which I'm selling them at. So that's 30 times five is 150. So let me just be really clear on this point because it's important. Each box that I'm selling is being sold at $30. Good, so let's just imagine now that I increase my production by one. So instead of five boxes, now I have six boxes and I'm going to sell those six boxes. We're going to think about the marginal revenue associated with that additional box. Now, we should just digress a little bit to talk about demand here. So what do we know about demand? Well, we know that it's downward sloping. The demand curve, our law of demand tells us that the price and quantity demanded move in opposite directions. That if it's the case that we increase our price, then we have to, we have to bear the fact that the market is going to demand less of it. So let's imagine that uh, initially we're at this point here, P and Q, but then we want to increase our Q. So we're going from Q is equal to five to Q is equal to six. So we want to increase our Q. We can see quite clearly here that if we want to increase our production from five to six, we have to decrease our price. The market will not bear uh, six units of that box at the initial price. We have to decrease our price. Again, this is really intuitive. If it's the case that we want to sell more, we have to decrease our price so that more people can afford it and are willing to buy it. So let's just, for the sake of the example, let's say that our price is equal to um, 28. That's less than 30, not by much, but less than 30. So let's just say that now we're producing six boxes at $28 per box. So our total revenue is still going to be the same formula. It's P times Q, but now it's 28 times six, which is, let me have a look at my calculator. That's 168. And just to be clear, what we're doing here is that each of the six boxes is being sold at $28. Okay, good. So let me clear the screen. Let, let me calculate our marginal revenue. Now the formula for marginal revenue when we're dealing with discrete cases like this is just the change in the total revenue divided by the change in Q. Now you can see that um, the change in Q, well, we go from Q5 to Q6, so that's just one. That's fine. And my change in total revenue, well, we can find that by getting the new total revenue and, and taking away from that the old total revenue. The difference will be the change, and that's 18. 18 over 1 is equal to 18. So what this, this is saying is that as a consequence of e increasing our production to six blue boxes, we've, we've increased our total revenue by 18. Our marginal revenue is 18. Now, what you can see here clearly is that the price we saw is 28. And so we've shown quite clearly that the marginal revenue is indeed less than our price. 18 is less than 28. Now, you might have gotten the reason why that's the case um, as I was working through the example, but let's be really clear about this. 
Initially, we were selling five blue boxes at $30 per box. And then it's the case that we had to decrease our price if it's the case that we wanted to produce one more unit. So if we produced six blue boxes, we had to sell each box at $28. Most students actually have the thought that, well, if you produce an additional box and even if you have to lower the price, you still get an additional $28, right? And that's true. For this last box here, because we're producing more than we did before, we get extra revenue and we are getting this extra revenue of $28. But what but that's only kind of half the story because we've had to drop the price on the first five boxes as well. For the first five boxes, we used to be able to charge $30, but now we have to charge $28 per box. So cumulatively, we've lost, well, we've lost $2 per box and we've got five boxes, so we're down $10. So if you think about the additional revenue that we're, we're getting from producing one more box, well, we do get the additional $28 because we're producing more, but we have to take away the negative impact of the drop in prices on the first five units. So negative 10, and we get the same answer, 18. So that's at the heart of why we say that MR is less than P for uh, firms with market power. Because firms with market power, they have to deal with the demand curve, which tells them if they increase their queue, they have to drop their prices. But they don't just drop the prices for the next unit, they have to drop the prices for all the units that come before it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a tricky point, but I know you guys can do it if you just um, think about it just, just for a little bit. I'm so confident that you'll get it eventually. Okay, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe, check out my other videos. Um, leave a comment below. I hope you guys are enjoying studying economics and are having a great day. See you later.